It's a story many are familiar with. 13 tense days in 1962 where the world was at the brink of nuclear war. But imagine being stationed on the front lines, catching a first-hand glimpse of the Cuban Missile Crisis. Ten on your side's Kara Dixon sat down with an Air Force veteran from Hampton who says he lived it. Yeah, and you guys actually might remember him because he got a new roof for his home back in November for Veterans Day. Now, he says he was just a young kid, just got in the Air Force and out of school when those tensions between our country, Cuba, and Russia hit its high point. We went through all of that and lived to tell about it. You feel pretty lucky. And the years, days, minutes, and seconds can erase the memories that will forever be a part of Air Force veteran Clarence Jones Jr.'s life. It was what you might call living with death every day. I just think about it now. It's just like the end of the world. And for a 23-year-old just out of the Air Force's electrician school, the last thing Jones expected was getting sent to Key West, Florida in 1962. We got a Cuban crisis. A Cuban crisis? Yeah, and you were going. Not me. I just got here. Jones says he had just graduated from the school and was the only one qualified to go. Part of the 482nd Fighter Inceptor Squadron, he and a few others lived in tents in Key West to keep an eye on the threat brewing in Cuba. We put that in case our airplanes come over, our rockets, our missiles, we'd be the first to get killed. Jones says he was also the only black man in his group at the time. But that threat of atomic annihilation was the imminent threat. You're just nervous all the time. You just don't know how to deal with life and death. That in your face. After spending 18 months down there, he finally came back to Langley, where he got out in 1966. He's been living in Hampton ever since and has been driving school buses for 20 years. My kids scream on the bus so loud. Oh, they just scream and say, how do you take all of that? I said, I've had so much worse. And it's those memories of death hanging on the horizon he sees playing out now between our country and North Korea. It's a feeling he's too familiar with and is hoping one that will soon be a distant memory like the rest. Doesn't take much, just one mistake. Just a flip of the switch. That's all it takes to launch a missile, one flip. And when it's locked in, you can't take it back. And as you can imagine, Jones says he's blessed to still be alive today despite living through that stressful situation. Now, coming up this Friday at 530, you'll hear from a local historian in Portsmouth who is also trying to keep black history alive in her city through a special type of museum. I'm Kara Dixon, 10 on your side. Kara, thank you. And 10 on your side is committed to celebrating Black History Month. Tomorrow, I'll share the story of a hidden figure living in Hampton. And she's hardly hidden. Dr. Christine Darden is the first African-American woman at NASA Langley's Research Center to be promoted into the senior executive service that's top rank. Her story and the influences she made in the space world, that story is tomorrow right here at 530. Our Hidden History special presentation will air at 430 February 11th. That's on Fox 43.